Welcome. Good to have a few minutes together today. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to be in Matthew 19 for a couple of minutes here. And uh, before I get there, uh, I just want to encourage you. We are uh, here in California anyway. We are enjoying some winter weather. And we don't always have winter weather here. And uh, some people are not enjoying it. There's a lot of snow up in the mountains. Uh, one of our men was at church Sunday for the first time in three weeks. And he said, I feel like a gopher. He's had to tunnel uh, tunnel around. And and uh, at his house, there's seven to eight feet of snow. And up a little higher, there is up to 12 feet of snow. And that's not blown in by the snow plows. That's, that's snowfall. And um, so he's young and in good shape. And so he was able to handle most of the the difficulties shoveling sheds and things and decks so they didn't collapse but a lot of people weren't that way but a lot of us here we're enjoying again some rain it's been good rain and uh meaning it's not flooding it's a little real light rain nothing like midwest rain our our air is so dry it can't handle the uh heavy midwest rains that wash our world away so uh, we're blessed and and uh, but it's easy to get grumbling it's easy to get thinking, oh, it's always raining, and, and then and when it's hot, they're going to gripe about it being hot, and then when it's dry, they'll gripe about it being dry. Uh, I think there's something to be said for that rejoice in the Lord always, and in everything, give thanks. And so today, uh, let's take a moment, look outside. I look outside, and and uh, the window's got some rain on it, and uh, it's okay. God's good, and uh, we can trust Him, and He's faithful. And so I want to encourage you, let's keep thankful Let's don't buy the grumbling drama of uh, the world around us. And a couple of, I don't know when it was, not long ago, I did one of my morning moments on too much drama. And all oh, the media is the most, they're big drama queens. And uh, they'll take any little thing and blow it out of proportion. And, and uh, let's, let's just rejoice in God's goodness and mercy. And, and he's going to see us through. Everything's all right. Now, I wanted, uh, of course, I'd like to remind you about soul winning. Please, please pray. Pray for your country, your, your state, your church. Pray for pray for souls to be saved. Pray that God would subdue the forces of evil and push them away and give people liberty to receive the gospel and, and that God would draw people to himself, young people and adults alike. Uh, pray for our jails and our rest home services and as we get into these services and, and we want people to hear the gospel clearly with clear minds and and we want them to understand. And, and then, of course, pray for the financial provisions of the ministry here, our missionaries and all one of our good missionaries, faithful man and his family. Um, uh, she's been diagnosed with some serious cancer and facing very serious surgeries, and that's not in the budget. And, um, and, and these, these dear people that we love and support, um, they need financial help. And um, starting new churches, we need financial help. And of course, our church has, has financial needs like everyone else. And so um, let's be faithful to our giving and let's be faithful to seek God personally, praying for God's blessing on our on our church, but churches, on the, wor- on the work of the gospel. Our country's in big, big, big mess. And, and we need Jesus in a big way. And we need repentant hearts. We need faithful servants of God. We need people who humbly seek God and seek God's direction in their homes and lives. So anyway, uh, let's look over at Matthew 19, or I'll at least read for you a couple of verses. Now, we understand that we're all different. We, of course, understand that. And um, um, I, I read uh, Kobe Bryant coming out of high school, either right out of high school or within a year or so, he's starting for the Lakers. That's not normal. Um, uh, I was normal. Um, I played basketball. I was in a tiny little school, 200 kids, and so I was pretty good. Uh, in, a, in a very small pool, you can be a big fish. Um, I went off into college, and I found out um, the pool was bigger, and it was a small college. I, I, I visited a, the, the, the Pac-8, they called it way back in the, in the 70s, and the Pacific 8, the top eight college teams, and, and um, one of those colleges asked me to come and spend a week with their team. And I was, I was so out of my league. Um, that was, that's where they drew the professional players from. And that was not my standard, not my ability. And so I went to a triple A school and I played a little my freshman year, very little, and maybe would have played a little my sophomore year. But that's when I hurt my shoulder and, 
And by that time, God had been working on me to go into the ministry. Um, but the point being, we're not all equal. We're not all the same. And, and we understand that's, that it goes without saying, but, but the, the simple fact is that, that God knows we're different. God knows a rhinoceros is not a giraffe and, and, uh, you know, a racehorse is, is not a rabbit and things are different and, and human humanity were different. Our, our makeup is different, but I want you to notice a simple statement here in Matthew 19, um, and verse 10 and 11. His disciples say unto him, If the case of a man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. Now the subject matter is, this is talking about marriage and divorce. And uh, and I'm not dealing with that today, just explaining that's the text, the context. Um, and uh, the Lord said uh, a little bit early, uh, the people had come to Jesus and said, um, can we or can we not put away a wife? And he said, um, only in the case of adultery. And, um, and he just very simply, if your spouse has been unfaithful, then all right. But he said, even then, it's only because of the hardness of your heart. And the disciples said, oh, that's a hard thing. And I don't know what marriages were like in those days, but obviously the disciples were candid enough saying, Lord, if, if, if that's the way it is, maybe we shouldn't even get married. Now, here's a statement Jesus made. He said in verse 11, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. And he's talking about not everybody could go without getting married. Not every guy can, can just go on into life and stay morally pure and, and stay faithful without becoming a, a heathen, a whoremonger, an immoral, whatever. And, but but the, 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 the marriage is not the subject. The subject is this, the Lord understands there's some people who can do it and there's some people who can't. Now we're not talking about, about not robbing banks and not murdering. And we can do right. We can all do right. But there are some steps of the Christian life that are huge and not everybody can take those. Um, the, there are those, I mean, Jesus went 40 days fasting without food and water. I know some people who fasted 40 days, but they drank juice. Well, that that just means somebody else chewed your food up for you. Um, and, and I've not fasted 40 days with you, so I'm not picking on them. But, um, but there are some people who want something more. Uh, I know a couple of guys who said, our goal is to win somebody to Christ every single day. Well, you know, I've never even tried that goal. Uh, Dwight Moody, famous evangelist preacher in the late 1800s, he said, I don't want to pillow my head without sharing the gospel with somebody. Well, that's different. He wants to at least share the gospel. These people want to win somebody to Christ. Well, it's okay. Both of those are all right. And, uh, but the statement, all men cannot receive this saying. Now, if you want to look over to Romans chapter 12 with me, and I'm going somewhere, so stick with me for a minute. In Romans chapter 12, the apostle Paul is talking about people who are hard to get along with. There are people, you know them, <laughs> hopefully you didn't marry them, but there are people hard to get along with. And uh, he, he makes this great statement in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And, oh, I love that. Two, two, state, two phrases in there, if it be possible. You know, some people you just can't get along peaceably with because it takes two people to have peace. So if it be possible, and then he says, as much as lieth in you, give it your best shot. Try to get along with your coworker. Try to get along with your neighbor. Try to get along with those folks at church. Try to get along with that old hard-nosed, stubborn old pastor of yours. He said, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. Now the goal, live peaceably with all men. But he, pref he could have just said that, live peaceably. But he knows you and he knows me. And he knows this world we're in and he knows the hours we work and the commuting hours and the frustration and the crowds and the money pressures and, and all the burdens, the health problems and the teenagers. And I got this baby that uh, wants to eat every hour on the hour all night long and the pressures get on you. And so instead of just saying live peaceably, which we know is right, he says, if it be possible and as much as lieth in you. And and the thing that's important to me about this is that, that God knows who you are. 
And we're not excusing sin and we're not excusing, you know, people, I'm hungry, so I robbed a bank. And we're not excusing anything criminal, but we're just saying there's some things that are hard that maybe I'm not up to speed yet. Um, you know, someone's, uh, I mean, I got saved and I started reading my Bible. Um, got saved on Wednesday, Saturday, I picked up a Bible and I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's been a day from then till now that I've not read my Bible. I've been in the hospital a couple of times. I could have could have missed a day there. Uh, flying across the international timeline or whatever the date line, um, I, I probably lost a day, gained a day, I don't know. But, um, but you know what? It may be people are not good readers or whatever, but, but and, and I'm going somewhere, so be patient with me in this. Look over to John chapter 16, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 16. And like uh, what Jesus said in um, um, all men cannot receive this saying, in, in John chapter 16 and verse 12, Jesus says this, John 16, 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So Jesus says to the disciples, there's some things I'd like to tell you, but you can't handle it. Either they can't understand it or they weren't spiritually minded enough to grasp the truth. I don't know what it is. Um, over in Hebrews, he said, strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Um, he said, but some, but milk belongs to babies. So there's baby Christian Bible doctrine, and there's meat Christian Bible, mature Christian Bible doctrine called meat. And neither one of them is, is uh, bad. Neither one of them is, a, is lazy or corrupt or carnal. We're just at, at, at different points. And Jesus says, I've got some things I'd love to tell you, but you're not ready. But I'm going to leave. The Holy Spirit's going to come and indwell you, and he'll teach you. And when the time comes, he'll help you understand your Bible doctrine. Now, um, let me give you just two or three quick thoughts on this. First of all, don't get too down on yourself that you're not what your friends are. Um, I've had people come to me, um, you know, pastor, I'm just, as I get older, I, I'm tired. I can't do this. I can't do this. And, and they want to be what they once were. You're not 20. You're not 40. Some of you aren't even 60 or 70. Um, we're who we are. And so number one lesson in this, don't, don't get too hard on yourself because you can't keep up with someone else. And it's, it's not fair to even compare yourself to someone else in the same age bracket. Remember Ray Fossey, most of you knew Ray, but Ray in his 60s, I'm going to say into his early 70s, he'd climb a ladder, carry bundles of shingles under the roof. He's roofing his house. He'd, he wouldn't use the ladder going down. He'd just kind of hop off a seven or eight foot little Eve. He said that the ladder's too slow, and he, he gloried in his physical prowess. He was awesome physically. Uh, he was a powerful man. And, um, but uh, it wasn't long. I saw, I saw cancer get a hold of him, and, and suddenly he's weak as a kitten in the chair. And, and everybody can't do what he did at 70, and everybody can't do what he did at 80. Um, but we can get saved and go to heaven now. So first of all, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, uh, I think most of us are probably coddle ourselves, but, but, uh, but let's do the best we can do. Let's push ourselves, but let's, I don't have to do what some other pastor does. Um, he's a different person than me and, and I don't have to do what another husband does. And I would love to be as together with certain areas of life as some men are. I'm, I'm me. I'm, I'm really trying. I run long hours. I, I, maybe I'm got priorities out of line, but I'm trying. I'm, 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 I'm doing the best I know how, and maybe I'll do better next week. But number one, don't be too hard on yourself. Secondly, uh, don't allow yourself to start comparing um, others. Don't allow yourself to expect others to do what you do. And there's some people who are pretty impressive in whatever, house cleaning, cooking, um, personal. I, I, I heard many, many years ago a lady talking about, well, I just don't know why people gain weight. I mean, where's their self-control? And I think, stop it. <laughs> don't go there. Uh, for one, God might judge you, put you on some medication, and then you'll blow it up or whatever. But another, we're just different. You may have some exceptional abilities. God may have given you an astute mind, and maybe he's blessed you unusually with a, a, a financial wisdom, and you know when to invest, you know what to do, and somebody else, they can't even keep their regular bills paid. And don't expect others to 
to uh, don't be too hard on yourself number one number two don't don't compare yourself to others don't act like we're superior to somebody don't do that because there's an area i'm not so good and uh, you you may be clean pure straight decent never watch tv never listen to a heathen radio or whatever but but how are you at mercy how are you at witnessing how are you at prayer and i don't know that's between you and god but but first lesson, don't be too hard on yourself. Second lesson, don't be too hard on others. Don't don't try to compare. Don't try to bring everybody up to your level because they're just not. Uh, people in the SEAL training, I watched some special forces training, and there was a, in one of the SEAL training, there's a there's a bell, and the guy kept saying, anytime you want out, you go ring that bell and walk off. You have complete permission. You don't have to go one step further. But ringing that bell was a serious, I quit. And nobody wanted to ring the bell, but people do. Uh, you know, trying out for Marine Recon or whatever, you know, all right, 300 show up and 25 make it or whatever. They're not bad people. They were the exceptional of their their enlisted men. And, and we're just not all made the same. And I remember playing basketball my freshman year in a pretty big school before I went to a small school. And I'm going to say 50, 60 people tried out for the freshman team. And it was a big 3,000 or so in our school. And the first day we ran five miles, we ran wind sprints, we ran the bleachers, and we ran the five miles again. And uh, second day, we had five days of conditioning. Second day, we didn't have the same number we started with. Third day, the numbers went down. Fourth day, by the Monday of the second week, we were down to about 20 people from those 60. And uh, the, the 20 who stayed were in pretty good shape. And uh, 30 or 40 or whatever that left, they weren't bad people. They just weren't up to it. They just, they just weren't as simple as that. And we could get proud of ourselves. We were playing freshman ball. There was a, a C team. I don't know what that was. There's a junior varsity team. And then there's a varsity team. There are three teams above us. So we ought not be getting too proud that we can do what we're doing. So number one, don't, don't uh, get too hard on yourself because you're not what others are. Secondly, don't be too hard on others. Don't think they have to measure up to you. And, uh, and third, when you're leading people, and whether it be a child, a grandchild, a ball team, a classroom full of people or whatever, when you're leading people, help them reach their measure of excellence. Jesus was so patient. He was so kind. He was, he was so good. Um, now you, when kids start school, everybody doesn't read at the same age. All right, you're six years old, be in first grade, learn to read. You know, my kids and my grandkids are in homes where moms and dads read to them daily. They worked on numbers. And by the time the kids were three and four years old, they had their numbers, their letters, and some were, were reading some and um, very hands-on mothers. And um, that's great. You, you know, there's kids just as good whose parents, maybe a single parent working full time, and they didn't, they didn't have a hands-on parent teaching them numbers and letters and colors before they went to kindergarten or first grade. And these two kids going to school at the same time, one's not better than the other. One might have had a better chance, better upbringing. Maybe, maybe their parents had more time, whatever it is. But forgetting mental differences, which there are, forgetting physical differences, which there are, forgetting attention span differences, which there are. They just didn't have the same background. This kid that didn't have any training before school might be smarter than this kid that did. And it might just take till third or fourth grade for this kid to catch up and get ahead because that could happen. I was one, I couldn't sit still. I had, I was a fidgety. I, they'd have probably given me drugs these days and said I had ADD or something. But in my world, you just, you toughed it out. And, and uh, I hated, I'm so glad God let me preach and I don't have to sit still during all the church services. But um, I, I hope you'll be, I hope you'll be patient. If you're working with people, Try to get them to be their best. Don't get child A to be as good as child B. And don't get child A and B to try and be as good as you. You're the teacher or you're the leader or whatever it might be. And uh, let's, let's take that person that's under our leadership and let's see how far we can bring them. And let's bring them as far as we can and let them grow. And uh, all men cannot receive this saying, Jesus said. And he said, I have many things to say to you, but... You're not ready for it right now, and uh, but the Holy Spirit's going to come. He'll teach you. So, oh, let's have a heart for people 
and let's love people, be patient with people. Hey, I, I never knew a day in my life I wasn't loved. Through a divorce of my parents, through a stepdad and whatever else uh, that might have been a little awkward for some people, I never doubted I was loved. I always had an environment where I knew I was loved. And uh, then take somebody else. I was just reading a story about a little gal in an orphanage that we support. And uh, she was basically abandoned in, uh, as a little child, put into another home, adopted into that home. That home broke up, big mess there. And now and then she's put at uh, six, eight, nine years old, whatever, six years old, I think, into an orphanage with other kids. She may wonder if anybody loves her. And, and she and I, she might be smarter than me, more gifted than me, more talented than me. But there's one thing I got, I knew I was loved. And that's, that's very valuable. But, but you see, we're not, we're not coming from the same stuff. And oh, there ought to be a lot of love and patience and grace with people. Let's go into this weekend being good to people. I love our pastor used to close his radio broadcast every day. Be good to everybody because everybody's having a tough time. And I say be good to everybody because everybody's a child of God and God's got a plan for them. And I want to, I don't want to trip anybody up. I want to influence them to be their very best for God and for their friends. Well, let's have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us. Pray, pray for our church. If you're not praying for anybody else, pray for our church. Pray for the preaching in the Sunday school, the Sunday, the buses, the, the jail rest home. Um, pray for God's hand to be on us and on his churches around the country.